part two in our series creating an Active Directory domain using Hyper-V. We're going to create Microsoft Server virtual machines to run Active Directory. Now remember you'll need to do this twice. <music> In the second part of this video, we're going to go ahead and create our very first virtual machine. We're going to create a Windows Server 2012 R2 virtual machine. As you can see, I'm using the Remote Desktop Connection Manager available for free out at Microsoft to essentially VPN in and connect to my base server. So this is my base server. Now, if you're watching the Windows 10 version of this, everything I'm going to do is exactly the same on Windows 10 as it is out here. The only reason I'm not doing it on Windows 10 is because as I connect with Remote Desktop Connection Manager, I can give you a better presentation, better screens of what I'm doing. So basically, we've already installed Hyper-V. I'm just gonna go out, click on the Windows, and open up the Hyper-V management tool. And as you can see, I have no virtual machines. Now, I just wanna introduce you to a couple things that you should be familiar with. First are the Hyper-V settings, okay? Now these are, I'm pretty sure the same on Windows 10 or Hyper-V installed on a client as well as on a server. So as you can see here, the virtual hard disks are gonna be stored out at C, users, public, documents, etc. This way by being out at public, other people can log in, they're gonna be able to get to these files, okay? Um, you may choose to change these um, I'm going to choose to leave these as a default. As you can see, my virtual machine configuration files are going to be also under C, Program Data, Microsoft, Windows, and Hyper-V. So I could change these if I wanted to, okay? Now, before we create a virtual machine, we actually have to create a virtual switch. So I'm going to go in here to the Virtual Switch Manager, and as you can see, I don't have a virtual switch. Now, if you'd like more information on virtual switches, I have a video that's just dedicated into what the heck an external virtual switch, internal and a private is. You could click on these, pause the video, read down below if you'd like, etc. I'm gonna create an external switch. This is essentially gonna be a virtual network interface card that binds to a physical network interface card on the server. So I'm gonna say create virtual switch and I'm gonna give it the name of vSwitch so that I know it's a virtual switch. It's going to be external, okay? And then I need to know which network interface card it's going to connect to. So one of the things that I'll do is I'll come out here and I'll type network connections and I'll open up my network connections. Now, if you notice, I've changed the name of this network connection but I can see that the default name is an HP. It's the number 53. I have many network connections in this server. Most likely you're gonna have just one. So it's the 53 adapter. So I'll close this out. And of course, there it is right there. I'll allow the management operating system to share this network adapter. That will be fine, okay? And if you notice, I called that, let's go out there one more time real quick. So network. Uh, view network connections, there it is. I called it base server network. So this is the base NIC card. So I'll just say base server. So I know that that is the virtual external switch connected to the base server NIC. So why don't I put in base server NIC? There we go. And I'll say, okay. So now I'll have a virtual machine. Go ahead and it'll create that real quick. There it is right there. I'll have that NIC card ready to go. So let's go ahead and install our first virtual machine. Now, as you can see for a second, I lost connection as it created that virtual switch, but I'm back and I'm ready to go. Now, remember, you're gonna wanna follow this video twice to create two domain controllers. So it's pretty easy to create this. And again, this is the same whether we're running Hyper-V on a Windows 10 machine or in this case, a server. We come up here to new, and we choose new virtual machine. So this is gonna walk us through the new virtual machine wizard. We're gonna click next. We're gonna give this virtual machine a name. I like to give it the computer name that I will associate with this server. So in my case, I'm going to be doing, let me redo that, M-I-I-M, that's master IT in minutes. That's what my domain will be. 
this will be a DC, a domain controller, and I like to go 0, 0, 0, 001 dash, and then I'll go win 2012 R2. So what this will be is it'll be a Windows 2012 R2 machine. Notice by having the 0, 0, 0, 001, I can have 9,999 types of servers. So for a file server, I'll do FS. For you know an email server, I might do EM. For a desktop, I'll do DSK. I can really grow my network having 9,099 possible machine names. So then I'll click Next. Now in this case, I'm going to pick Generation 2. Okay, so you can see the guest operating systems that are supported here. I get some additional features and functionalities, large drive spaces, etc. I'll choose next. Now here, I'm going to go ahead and, as you know, I've got 64 gigs of RAM on this machine. So I'll go ahead and give it 4 gigs for this server. And I'm not going to choose Use Dynamic Memory for this virtual machine. Now, if you're on a Windows machine, you have 8 gigs of RAM, choose Dynamic Memory. You're building a lab. You don't care if it performs great. In this case, I'll give it 4 gigs because I have ample memory. I would suggest 2 gigs at least for a server. Choose Next. Now here's that connection we made and we're gonna choose the virtual switch. This way, my virtual machine will have a network interface card, a virtual connection to the internet so that we can update it. I'll choose next. There's the virtual hard disk. This is a lab environment. I don't need a huge C drive. So I'm gonna just choose 60 gig and choose next. I'm gonna install the operating system. Now, I've already installed out on documents here. I've got the installation files ready to go. So installation, there's my 2012 R2. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have legally licensed software or a legal trial version when you install this. We'll click on here, we'll choose next. This will give me a summary of all the things that I chose. If I need to, I can go back and I'll choose finish. Now it's gonna go ahead and create that virtual hard disk create the virtual machine configuration real quick, and then we'll be able to fire up this machine and install the OS. So you're watching this in real time. I'm gonna go ahead and choose connect to connect to this virtual machine, and I'm gonna start it. Now, before I start it, let me show you that by attaching that ISO, you'll see it attached it to that virtual DVD drive. So there's the ISO. So this would be as if it was a physical machine. I go ahead and click start. It's starting the machine. It'll find the drive. Looks like I missed that. Let me try again. There we go. I had to hit control alt delete because I wasn't fast enough with hitting that press any key to begin the installation. So as you can see, we're beginning to install Windows Server 2012 just like we would if we were doing it on a physical machine. I'm gonna choose next and install now. Now this is gonna bring up a place that I need to put my license key. When it does that, I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna put in my license key so I'm not sharing it with the world and I'll come right back after I click next. Hold on. So I've gone ahead, I've entered my license key and I'm ready to continue. Now I'm gonna go ahead and load Windows Server 2012 R2 Data Center Edition with server with a GUI. So I'll choose next. After selecting that, I'll accept the license terms. Make sure you're reading these license terms and then I'm gonna do a custom install. That way I can install it on that virtual hard disk that we created when we instantiated the wizard. I'll say next, and it'll walk through the process. Now this should be fairly quick. It's gonna copy the Windows files. I have them loaded locally on my machine. It's gonna then do the files, get ready for the installation. I'm gonna go ahead and pause while it does this. Once it finishes up, it'll do a restart, and we'll come back when we need to do some interaction with this installation. So as you can see here, the machine is restarting for the first time to finish the installation. All right, so at this point, we need to enter a password. And as you can see, I've already tried this once and mismatched the password. So I'm gonna try it again. This was after the restart, I'll do a password and it will finalize the configuration. At this point, I'm ready to do a control alt delete, log in to the server as the first time. Now remember, you're gonna to wanna to complete this video twice so that we have two Active Directory domain controllers ready to go. So as you can see, it's noticed that network interface card. It's gonna to connect to a network. I can say yes or no there. It's gonna bring up server manager. 
At this point, make sure that you do all the updates to the virtual machine. This will also make sure it can connect out to the internet. We are gonna change that virtual switch later when we create our complete lab. Let me know if you have questions. Take care.